Hi, this is Bryce with eLearning Brothers. Today I'm going to show you around the breaking points that are in Captivate 9, as well as a few common practices we should all take when, when working in a responsive project. So while developing, I really like to make sure I have the device height visible. So what I mean by that is this checkbox marked right here. Um, if, if I go to properties, I can see the style and, and this device height uh, section here. And if I uncheck it, you'll see I don't have that nice yellow line around my stage. And that can be very beneficial if I ever have maybe an image or an object that is overlapping the stage height or width. I can see where the edges are exactly. So, I really like to use that and I think that should be a common practice to have this device height being shown. However, I also want to take you through the, the heights and widths that are used inside of the new views uh, or breaking points that Captivate 9 has. Uh, now as we can see, there are more um, breaking points that are in Captivate 9. Captivate 8 only had three breaking points, the desktop, the tablet landscape, and the mobile portrait. So they added these two, tablet portrait and mobile landscape. Now the nice thing about these as well is I can go ahead and remove some of these um, breaking points here. So I can do that as easy as that and, or add them um, just like that as well. Now as we go down in the, the widths and heights of each breaking point, um, my first thought when I when I first saw these is that the tablet landscape should probably be just flip flop to um, to what the tablet portrait is. So, for instance, uh, the landscape to the of the width is 896. The height now in the portrait should probably be the same 896, but it's not. It's 627. Now. Um, now I can't be a mind reader and I don't know exactly why Adobe did this the way they did it, but in my opinion, um, this is actually a really good thing because uh, take for example the mobile views, they have the same tip, similar thing where where the, uh, the device height is um, 414 in the uh, landscape and in my opinion or, or what I assumed it should have been is it just should have been flip flopped and that should also be 414. However. Um, or 410, 410, yeah, 410, 414. Um, however, I think the reason why they did this is uh, they wanted you to optimize for the maximum size that um, that a device could be at, or the maximum width that a device could be at. So take, for example, uh, mobile phones again. Um, there's a bunch of different sizes. I have an Android. My coworker has a uh, iPhone, and those are, are vastly different sizes of, uh, of screens. So um, if somebody were to develop in, a, in the mobile uh, design, um, they probably wouldn't be just designing for one type of phone. Uh, a lot of people have different types of phones, and so they'll they'll uh, be designing for multiple sizes and multiple multiple devices. So, with that said, this is probably the maximum width that somebody might have for a mobile device, 414 width. And now, um, now what it is left up to us is to make sure that we have widths and heights and things like that uh, according to a percentage rather than a pixel. So let me show you exactly what I mean. So if I were to make the width of these text boxes pixels and publish it, now if I view this and uh, shrink the device or the, uh, the displaying window, and this is the exact same thing. If I were to shrink the view of the window, it's the exact same thing as uh, going to a, a device that has a smaller window. So this is a good way to develop and um, test your development is, uh, is going into a window and just shrinking the width of it. So let's take, take this. Let's go to 414, all right, 414 width. So this is how I developed it. And this looks great. 
But say again, uh, again, this is the maximum size that a, a phone could be, a maximum width the phone could be. My phone personally uh, is a lot smaller than this. It's around, I think it's around 300 or something like that. I'm not exactly sure. But check this out. So um, if I shrink the size of the window to somewhere around 300, where, where it should probably be at for my personal phone, uh, the pixel width on these text boxes stay at that same pixel width. And so the text now still comes out to about right here and gets cut off. But since I put these text boxes at percent of the width the total width of the displaying window, it then shrunk according to how big the window was. So, so that's the differences between, again, pixels and uh, percentages. And, and that's fun to play with. It can be a little bit frustrating sometimes when you're first getting the hang of it, but um, it, it's very useful and has a very um, practical use to it. So if we come back here, I want to show you one more thing. And that's uh, the, the use of anchor points, or what they call uh, smart positions. So if we see here, if we go to position uh, and go to any object, you'll see these pink lines. And you can turn that on and off by selecting smart position here. So what this is saying is that I want this object to be 512 pixels from the top. Okay, so there is a problem with that. And let's just go ahead and uh, make a fix and show you the two differences between the, the two ways of doing this. So I can move this smart position to uh, attach to any object that I want. So I could ha have it attached to this screen or to the stage, or I could have it attached to, a, um, to an image. And I'll show you what happens here. Now, before we, uh, before I go and, and publish this out, I want to know how how I have the, every image to be displayed according to if the width shrinks, the uh, the height will also shrink shrink if that's on auto. So I'll show you here. Let's let's make this at percent, and we can see how those um, how those all react with each other. And go to the slide that we were speaking of, and um, this inspect element tool in uh, Chrome is really nice because I can now select the the type of phones that are that would have this the width, the type of phones that would have the same width and height and things like that. So I really like using this Chrome. But check this out. Uh, so if I were, if you remember, let's go down. This object right here, I set to um, not an auto height, but a percent height and percent width. This stayed at the same height that it's that it's at, and um, and is now mess getting messed up and not staying with this image here. And so, um, if it were the image that were the other way around, that the image was um, at percent height, it would be skewed. Okay, so there's that thing. Um, there's that problem. This problem right here is this object wasn't attached or the smart position wasn't attached to the image. So uh, what happens if you go down further, you'll see this big weird gap here. And now this text isn't really attached to this image anymore. However, this text right here, since I attached it to the image, right, it followed the image because the height changed, uh, the position uh, also changes as well because it's always going to be, I think it was at 15 pixels away from the edge of this, uh, this image. So it always is 15 pixels away. This one is always, what, 500 and something away from the top. So it stays in that position, but this follows that, uh, the height of this object. So there you go. So once you, you have used those anchor points appropriately and the uh, percents uh, of widths appropriately, you can then have a design that works in all different views and all different um, sizes of screens. So I hope that helped with designing your own responsive project. But that's all for now and have a nice day.